Well, good day, everybody. Depending on what time of the day it is in your part of the world, uh, you're going to see this, hopefully, uh, at the beginning of Holy Week or toward the beginning. Now, I'm sure you know this line in all of the Synoptic Gospels from Jesus. He says, there's no other sign I'm going to give you except the sign of Jonah. Now, that's a strong statement. You know, those of you who are Orthodox or Catholic, we have so many symbols and stories. And, and he says, there's only one that matters, and that's the sign of Jonah. Now, we created a fancier word for it in later centuries of theology, and we call it uh, the Paschal Mystery. But what it is in a word, and see, people get it much better. In a, I mean, Jonah is almost a child's story. And uh, it shows that the point is not to read it literally. I don't think the Jewish people believe that you could be swallowed and be in the belly of a whale for three days and really live. The stomach acids would get you. <laughs> and they'd have the good science to know that. So it's clearly a story. But when you stop this fighting about stupid literalism, forgive me, and really say, what's it saying? Well, what it's saying is you got to go down before you can go up. And he says, I'm going to tell you a story. This story is deemed so important in the Jewish religion. It's the only prophet read on the great uh, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And in the afternoon of the Day of Atonement, the community sits and they read the whole story of the prophet Jonah. And what do we have? We have a man who's running from God. That's all of us. That's every man. We don't know we are, but <coughs> we more or less are. And uh, he's picked up. Uh, he goes on a boat to escape his destiny, his call to preach good news to the Ninevites. Now, all we need to know is the Ninevites are not Jews. And as a good Jew, he doesn't feel like he wants to give them good news. It'd be like if God told me to go tell the Pentecostals or the Methodists or they were the right ones, not us wonderful Catholics. <laughs> every group does that. It makes its group the center of the world and every other group wrong. So Jesus, in this simple story, is going to move us from any belonging system, any group affiliation, to a process. And in fact, this process doesn't demand that you be formally religious at all. So they're, they're, they're on a boat, they're caught in a storm, uh, and the sailors say, I think we've got to pray to our God. And uh, Jonah prays to his God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, and he tells him, uh, you got to throw yourself into the sea. Well, God bless, Jonah has enough courage to do that. He throws himself into the sea, and wouldn't you know it, he's swallowed by a big fish. Now, I have, I have a huge collection of images of this story. This one was given me by a, a prisoner in the years when I was a chaplain at the jail, it's carved in soapstone. You probably can't see it from there, but somehow he had enough patience to dig out the hole inside and to carve a little man sitting there in the center of the whale. Then among the many pictures I've collected, must be 50 of them at least, most of them are in now our executive director's office. Uh, Michael Poffenberger. And this is, of all of them, my favorite. Because if you look closely, and I'm sure you are, 
you see that he isn't being thrown so much. He's jumping in voluntarily into the mouth of the whale. This is marvelous as far as I can see. He's surrendering to his own dismemberment, his own uh, undoing of his ego is the way we'd say it now. And there's a beautiful prayer in the second chapter of Jonah. And uh, I am cast out. How shall I ever look again on your holy temple? The waters surround me <clears throat> right to my throat. The abyss is all around me. The seaweed is wrapped around my head. It, it's really a, a very dramatic prayer in the style of the, the Psalms. But I, with a song of praise, will sacrifice to you. The vow I have made I will fulfill. Salvation comes from God. And Yahweh spoke to the fish, and he then vomited him on the shore. It isn't a pretty image at all, being swallowed by a whale and then being vomited. But where does he vomit him? The very place he's running away from, Nineveh, where those are the pagans. It'd be like vomiting me, I don't know, whatever city you think of as wicked and sinful and wrong and not Christian. That's where he's vomited. And darn it, he goes in against his own will and preaches salvation, if I could use that word, uh, to the Ninevites. And damn it, I'm sorry, they repent. He wants them to fight him. He wants to be a martyr. He wants them to disagree. And they agree with the word better than his own Jewish people. And this does nothing more than upset him. I won't read the rest of the story where he goes off lamenting and mourning. I fled to Tarshish. I knew you were a God of tenderness and compassion, but I didn't want you to be that way toward them. Your tenderness and compassion is just toward those of us in the end group, whatever your end group is. We all think God loves our end group, and the outer group should be, uh, what was the word, smited. Well, they're always supposed to be smited. Well, God doesn't cooperate with Jonah's prejudice. And, uh, well, you can read it. This, I hope, will encourage you to read the very final verses. Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. It's such a childish image, not to speak of all the animals. So the vast verse is God seems to care about not just the Ninevites, but their animals. And uh, poor Yahweh, I mean poor Jonah, you don't know if he's successful or a failure. He appears to be a failure in his own mind, even though in the great story, the God story, he's a success. So no surprise why the Jewish people read this prophet, only this prophet, on the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, the story of Jonah, to keep us from thinking there's any group, there's any belonging system which assures you of the truth. There's only, I'll call it, a process. And you could be an absolute, well, I'm going to say it, atheist, agnostic, and go through the journey of death and rebirth, and you're, you've got the sign of Jonah. You see? This is, uh, you know, tremendously iconoclastic. It's amazing that the Jewish people have the courage to read it because it's not saying they've got God in their pocket. Uh, and we have whatever group you belong to. If you go through the journey 
of surrender and dying and being lifted up by God, that's the only sign Jesus is going to give. Wow! Does that, this simplify religion? It hasn't had a lot of effect, though. But you can see why Jesus said it's the only sign I'm going to give you and why I spent 30 years collecting Jonah images. I think that's what we're going to try to talk about this week. And thank you for trusting us. Thank you for being with us as we walk through the journey collectively on, in this most holy week, just like the Jewish people do on their most holy day. Amen. Hallelujah.